Hi, I'm Halima Henderson. I'm an opening act teaching artist, and I just self-produced my first short film called Sorry, which is award-winning. And I'm also gonna share some advice on some things that I've learned as a producer myself and as an actor on this journey. Pre-production for a film project is a lot of work. Pre-production can encompass everything from scouting locations, from figuring out your budget before you go to the location, getting your crew, getting insurance, finding the equipment, finding out what your budget allows you to get for equipment, casting your film. All of that is pre-production. So usually as you get closer to your shoot day, your first AD, depending on how you set up your, your production staff, will have a meeting, usually with the director, maybe with the writer, if the writer chooses to be on set, and they'll set a schedule for the actual shoot day. So pre-production can last anywhere from a couple of months to a couple of weeks, depending on the size of your film. My pre-production, <laughs> lasted quite a bit because we had some things that came up. We lost a director, we had to find someone else. Um, so that kind of shuffled our timeline around. Uh, but from the beginning when we said we are now in pre-production, I think it was like three weeks from pre-production to, to being in production. I don't know if there's anything typical about shoot days. It's gonna vary with your budget the size of your crew, the size of your set, what you're doing. I didn't have any stunts, so there wasn't any need for there to be a rehearsal beforehand. My shoot day looked like this. My assistant director, director, a UPM, which is a unit production manager. They're basically the people that make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed on your contracts got to the set before I did so that I could actually have time to be an actor. Um, when I got there, everything was all set up. We hired interns and PAs that were responsible for going and getting the equipment from all over New York City, bringing it to set in Jersey City so that when I showed up, um, I think my call time was 5 a.m. I showed up, I went to hair and makeup, I met my uh, co-star who I'd never met. We didn't have a rehearsal. We sat down and the director said, let's start this right now. I wasn't even in hair and makeup and they wanted to just get sight lines, kind of like what we did when we started. Then we shot for four hours. It was a union set, so we had times that we had to break our crew. And then we had our lunch, we came back, we finished the rest of the film. Probably could have used another day, but again, budget. So our day was 12 hours. Some, which is pretty typical. Some sets will go to 16, but we're really pushing in the, into the industry to push that back to 12 so that there's more of a work-life balance. It's a crazy day. It's really crazy. And as talent, there's a lot of hurry up and wait. I couldn't tell you how many times a PA would come and say, is she out of hair and makeup? <laughs> is she done? Is she done? Is she done? And then I would get to set and wait. <laughs> and look around like, what's, what are we doing? What's happening? I'm not saying any words, what's going on? We have to move a light. The lights are coming on from all the buildings in Manhattan, so we have to hold, we have to switch our setups. So uh, tip there, be patient. I have a team. I was really, really lucky to have a team. And most of the folks that were on my crew were all people that I knew. The writer director was someone whose show I did years and years and years ago. Uh, the assistant director uh, was friends with another cast member from a different show. I put out an all call, hey, I need an assistant director on social media. And uh, she was the first person that responded. And I said, oh my gosh, you do this professionally. I don't have a lot of money. And she said, I just wanna do this with you. Uh, so use your community, especially here at Opening Act. You're, you've been creating with people that are now your community that you will have for the rest of your journey. Ask them, 
stay involved with them, go see their shows. Yeah, that's the best way to do it from, from inside. On a technical note, there are certain websites that if you need to fill, there's like a thing called Studio Binder, where if you're looking for crew, I needed a, a Steadicam, which is a pretty specialized uh, camera operator. We looked for it. We went and read resumes and said, oh, we need this person. We would love it if it was a woman. We found a really cool uh, young woman right out of college. Whew. She was she was pretty cool. <laughs> Steady came was real heavy. She was pretty cool. So lots of different avenues. I find inspiration for characters everywhere. It's the beauty of being in New York City. Uh, I do a lot of watching people and I bring it into almost every character that I create. We often talk about as an actor something called like emotional recall and so I'll notice folks maybe having an argument on a street corner and then I can take oh maybe I notice oh when she got really mad she didn't scream, she got really quiet. Or, oh, when he was really happy, he did this weird thing where he brushed the hair off his, of the, his back of his neck. So I might remember that physicality and put it into a character that I'm using. So inspiration, it's all around. You just have to keep your eyes open. My acting resume is much different than my professional resume. An actor's resume will have just acting jobs on it. So if you look at my acting resume, you'll see select jobs that I've done because now I've been doing this for quite a while. So there's some things that I've taken off my resume. But when you're first starting off acting, you can put everything on. Put your school shows on. You could even put a little bit of background work on. And it doesn't have to be an entire page. Mine is a page now because I'm old. <laughs> I've been doing this for quite a bit, so I've been able to fill it out and then start to trim th some things and keep the stuff uh, that is meaningful, looks visible and credible to producers, casting directors, and agents at the top. Agents, especially, want to see that you've done some work, that they have something that they can market, agents and managers. They wanna know that you are going to make both of them some money, right? Casting directors oftentimes will sidestep an agent or manager. So for myself, I'm not represented, but I will meet casting directors, whether they're theatrical, film, meaning film and TV or commercial at workshops, uh, I'll meet them at shows that I've done, and then they'll call me in that way. But the goal, yes, is to meet an agent or a manager because in that way you have a little bit more um, power to do certain things to get you into rooms. But the trick with that is, is uh, an agent can't book a job for you. They can help open a door, but once the door's open, you have to be able to walk into the room and do the work so that they continue to bring you back. Do not compare your journey to someone else's journey. There is nothing about a career in the arts that is linear. No one's career looks like the next person's career. And I think, unfortunately, in this time of social media, where everybody is looking at the great parts of everybody else's life, it can feel like other people are getting places faster, and that's not true. There's no such thing in this business as an overnight success unless you become famous as like a 12-year-old, right? So my biggest advice is don't get in the habit of comparing yourself to other people. Know what it is that you want to do, how you want to say it, and what your purpose is. I think that that's so important because this is a journey and you may think it's going to go one way and something changes it and you do something else. When I first got here to the city, all I wanted to do was theater. That was it. I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to think about anything else. And it just ended up that I started getting called in for national commercials and I started doing more work on television and film sets and really loving it. And I thought, 
all right, I want to learn more about this. And I stayed the course. My second piece of advice is this. This business is about numbers. So you could start out as a writer, a director, or an actor with 150 other people that are all trying to do the same thing. Someone decides they don't want to do this anymore. They want to go and run a nonprofit and they leave. Someone else decides they want to move back home to the Midwest and they leave. Those numbers start to dwindle. And what I've noticed is all of us that have stayed here are now starting to reap the benefits of all that work and commitment. But it, you, you have to be committed, you have to be dedicated, you have to know your purpose, and you also have to know that it's okay to change your mind and do something else. I want to be real honest about why I self-produce my own work. It's because I'm unrepresented. And so hopefully my short film, Sorry, is a way for me to have a calling card so that when agents, managers, casting directors, they always ask this, can I see you in something? I can say, yes, you can. And I can send them my short film really quickly. For many years, I had heard, you should produce something, produce your own work, produce your own work. And I didn't know how. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. And luckily, because I've created a community of artists, someone approached me and said, I think I can make a calling card for you. I wanna write a movie for you. You just have to ask me to do it. And so I did. <laughs> I put on like big girl pants and said, please, yes, write me something. And now I'm gonna use that to hopefully push me to the next step. Is it gonna be the end all be all? Probably not. But I do think instead of waiting for the work to come to you, if you can be creative um, and do things with your community of friends, that's the good stuff. That's when it's really fulfilling. I just, I feel really proud about it and I'm glad that it gets to be my calling card.